a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Statue of Liberty The Statue of Liberty is a colossal neoclassical sculpture on Liberty Island in New York Harbor in New York City, in the United States. The copper statue, a gift from the people of France to the people of the United States, was designed by French sculptor Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi, and built by Gustave Eiffel. The statue was dedicated on October 28, 1886. The Statue of Liberty is a figure of a robed woman representing Libertas, a Roman liberty goddess. She holds a torch above her head, with her right hand, and in her left hand carries a tabula anza to inscribed in Roman numerals with, July formed Clux V, the date of the U.S. Declaration of Independence. A broken chain lies at her feet. The statue became an icon of freedom and of the United States, and was a welcoming sight to immigrants arriving from abroad. Bartholdi was inspired by a French law professor and politician, Edouard René de Laboulay, who is said to have commented in 1865 that any monument raised to U.S. independence would properly be a joint project of the French and American peoples. Because of the post-war instability in France, work on the statue did not commence until the early 1870s. In 1875, Laboulay proposed that the French finance the statue and the U.S. provide the site and build the pedestal. Bartholdi completed the head and the torch-bearing arm before the statue was fully designed, and these pieces were exhibited for publicity at international expositions. The torch-bearing arm was displayed at the Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia in 1876, and in Madison Square Park in Manhattan from 1876 to 1882. Fundraising proved difficult, especially for the Americans, and by 1885 work on the pedestal was threatened by lack of funds. Publisher Joseph Pulitzer, of the New York World, started a drive for donations to finish the project and attracted more than 120,000 contributors, most of whom gave less than a dollar. The statue was built in France, shipped overseas in crates, and assembled on the completed pedestal on what was then called Bedloe's Island. The statue's completion was marked by New York's first ticket tape parade and a dedication ceremony presided over by President Grover Cleveland. The statue was administered by the United States Lighthouse Board until 1901 and then by the Department of War. Since 1933 it has been maintained by the National Park Service. Public access to the balcony around the torch has been barred for safety since 1916. Origin According to the National Park Service, the idea for the Statue of Liberty was first proposed by Edouard René de Laboulaye, the president of the French Anti-Slavery Society and a prominent and important political thinker of his time. The project is traced to a mid-1865 conversation between de Laboulaye, a staunch abolitionist and Frédéric Bartholdi, a sculptor. In after-dinner conversation at his home near Versailles, Label A, an ardent supporter of the Union in the American Civil War, is supposed to have said, if a monument should rise in the United States, as a memorial to their independence, I should think it only natural if it were built by united effort, a common work of both our nations. The National Park Service, in a 2000 report, however, deem this a legend traced to an 1885 fundraising pamphlet, and that the statue was most likely conceived in 1870. In another essay on their website, the Park Service suggested that Label A was minded to honor the Union victory and its consequences, with the abolition of slavery, and the Union's victory in the Civil War in 1865. Label A's wishes of freedom and democracy were turning into the reality in the United States. In order to honor these achievements, Label A proposed that a gift be built for the United States on behalf of France. Label A hoped that, by calling attention to the recent achievements of the United States, the French people would be inspired to call for their own democracy in the face of a repressive monarchy. According to sculptor Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi, who later recounted the story, Label A's comment was not intended as a proposal, but it inspired Bartholdi. Given the repressive nature of the regime of Napoleon III, Bartholdi took no immediate action on the idea except to discuss it with Label A. Bartholdi was in any event busy with other possible projects. In the late 1860s, he approached Ismail Pasha, Khedive of Egypt, with a plan to build progress or Egypt carrying the light to Asia. A huge lighthouse in the form of an ancient Egyptian female fella or peasant, robed and holding a torch aloft, at the northern entrance, 
to the Suez Canal in Port Said. Sketches and models were made of the proposed work, though it was never erected. There was a classical precedent for the Suez proposal, the Colossus of Rhodes, an ancient bronze statue of the Greek god of the sun, Helios. This statue is believed to have been over 100 feet high, and it similarly stood at the harbor entrance and carried a light to guide ships. Any large project was further delayed by the Franco-Prussian War, in which Bartholdi served as a major of militia. In the war, Napoleon III was captured and deposed. Bartholdi's home province of Alsace was lost to the Prussians, and a more liberal republic was installed in France. As Bartholdi had been planning a trip to the United States, he and Labour lay decided the time was right to discuss the idea with influential Americans. In June 1871, Bartholdi crossed the Atlantic, with letters of introduction signed by Labourley. Arriving at New York Harbor, Bartholdi focused on Bedloe's Island as a site for the statue, struck by the fact that vessels arriving in New York had to sail past it. He was delighted to learn that the island was owned by the United States government. It had been ceded by the New York State Legislature in 1800 for harbor defense. It was thus, as he put it in a letter to Label A, land common to all the states, as well as meeting many influential New Yorkers, Bartholdi visited President Ulysses S. Grant, who assured him that it would not be difficult to obtain the site for the statue. Bartholdi crossed the United States twice by rail, and met many Americans who he thought would be sympathetic to the project. But he remained concerned that popular opinion on both sides of the Atlantic was insufficiently supportive of the proposal, and he and Labour lay decided to wait before mounting a public campaign. Bartholdi had made a first model of his concept in 1870. The son of a friend of Bartholdi's, U.S. artist John LaFarge, later maintained that Bartholdi made the first sketches for the statue during his U.S. visit at LaFarge's Rhode Island studio. Bartholdi continued to develop the concept following his return to France. He also worked on a number of sculptures designed to bolster French patriotism after the defeat by the Prussians. One of these was the Lion of Belfort, a monumental sculpture carved in sandstone below the fortress of Belfort, which, during the war had resisted a Prussian siege for over three months. The defiant lion, 73 feet long and half that in height, displays an emotional quality characteristic of Romanticism, which Bartholdi would later bring to the Statue of Liberty. Design, Style, and Symbolism Bartholdi and Labelay considered how best to express the idea of American liberty. In early American history, two female figures were frequently used as cultural symbols of the nation. One of these symbols, the personified Columbia, was seen as an embodiment of the United States in the manner that Britannia was identified with the United Kingdom and Marianne came to represent France. Columbia had supplanted the earlier figure of an Indian princess, which had come to be regarded as uncivilized and derogatory toward Americans. The other significant female icon in American culture was a representation of liberty, derived from Libertas, the goddess of freedom widely worshipped in ancient Rome, especially among emancipated slaves. A liberty figure adorned most American coins of the time, and representations of liberty appeared in popular and civic art, including Thomas Crawford's Statue of Freedom atop the dome of the United States Capitol building. Artists of the 18th and 19th centuries striving to evoke Republican ideals commonly used representations of Libertas as an allegorical symbol. A figure of liberty was also depicted on the Great Seal of France. However, Bartholdi and Labelay avoided an image of revolutionary liberty such as that depicted in Eugène de Lacroix's famed Liberty Leading the People. In this painting, which commemorates France's Revolution of 1830, a half-clothed, Liberty leads an armed mob over the bodies of the fallen. Labelay had no sympathy for revolution, and so Bartholdi's figure would be fully dressed in flowing robes, instead of the impression of violence in the Delacroix work. Bartholdi wished to give the statue a peaceful appearance and chose a torch, representing progress, for the figure to hold. Crawford's statue was designed in the early 1850s. It was originally to be crowned with the Pileus the cap given to emancipated slaves in ancient Rome. Secretary of War Jefferson Davis, a southerner who would later serve as president of the Confederate States of America, was concerned that the Pileus would be taken as an abolitionist symbol. He ordered that it be changed to a helmet. De La Croix's figure wears a Pileus, and Bartholdi at first considered placing one on his figure as well. 
Instead, he used a diadem, or crown, to top its head. In so doing, he avoided a reference to Marianne, who invariably wears a bilius. The seven rays form a halo or aureole. They evoke the sun, the seven seas, and the seven continents, and represent another means, besides the torch, whereby liberty enlightens the world. Bartholdi's early models were all similar in concept, a female figure in neoclassical style representing liberty, wearing a stola impella, and holding a torch aloft. According to popular accounts, the face was modeled after that of Charlotte Basa Bartholdi, the sculptor's mother. But Regis Huber, the curator of the Bartholdi Museum is on record as saying that this, as well as other similar speculations, have no basis in fact. He designed the figure with a strong, uncomplicated silhouette, which would be set off well by its dramatic harbor placement, and allow passengers on vessels entering New York Bay to experience a changing perspective on the statue as they proceeded towards Manhattan. He gave it bold classical contours and applied simplified modeling, reflecting the huge scale of the project and its solemn purpose. Bartholdi wrote of his technique, the surfaces should be broad and simple, defined by a bold and clear design, accentuated in the important places. The enlargement of the details or their multiplicity is to be feared, by exaggerating the forms, in order to render them more clearly visible, or by enriching them with details, we would destroy the proportion of the work. Finally, the model, like the design, should have a summarized character, such as one would give to a rapid sketch, only it is necessary that this character should be the product of volition and study, and that the artist, concentrating his knowledge, should find the form and the line in its greatest simplicity. Bartholdi made alterations in the design as the project evolved. Bartholdi considered having Liberty hold a broken chain, but decided this would be too divisive in the days after the Civil War. The erected statue does rise over a broken chain, half hidden by her robes and difficult to see from the ground. Bartholdi was initially uncertain of what to place in Liberty's left hand. He settled on a tabula incerta, used to evoke the concept of law. Though Bartholdi greatly admired the United States Constitution, he chose to inscribe, July formed Kluxfi, on the tablet, thus associating the date of the country's declaration of independence with the concept of liberty. Bartholdi interested his friend and mentor, architect Eugène Violet Le Duc, in the project. As chief engineer, Violet Le Duc designed a brick pier within the statue, to which the skin would be anchored. After consultations with the metalwork foundry Gaget, Gautier and Company, Violet Le Duc chose the metal which would be used for the skin, copper sheets, and the method used to shape it, repousse, in which the sheets were heated and then struck with wooden hammers. An advantage of this choice was that the entire statue would be light, for its volume, as the copper need be only 0.094 in thick. Bartholdi had decided on a height of just over 151 feet for the statue, double that of Italy's San Carlo and the German statue of Arminius, both made with the same method. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?